Hi, thanks for joining us at Pineapple Racing. This week we're going to look at inspecting rotor housings. Let's take a look at a brand new rotor housing so you can see where we're starting. This here is for a 12A. It's a brand new factory rotor housing. And we're going to want to look at quite a few things on this. For used housing, we're going to check width. We're going to check for visual damage cracks at spark plug holes, or on housings that might have been overheated, water jackets that have collapsed from the heat. We're going to be checking the surface for scratches, chatter, or other damage, chrome flake, things like that, that would yield a housing that is not usable. The first thing I usually look for is the very, very obvious, which would be external damage. Are there any broken studs? Has the housing been somehow damaged in a wrecking yard by a forklift? Are the spark plug threads still intact? Because these are very tough to repair. So that would be the first thing. The next thing I look at is the chrome surface. The most obvious and common failure, as in this housing right here, the chrome is actually pulling off of the metal substrate and you have a gap here, and of course, there's no way for the apex seal to seal there. The factory specification is about three millimeters, but personally, any chrome flake at all in the housing, in my opinion, is not usable. Let's look at an extreme example of the chrome flaking, which you'll see more in the earlier housings. You can see the chrome in some areas has been flaked almost halfway across the housing. And this housing is junk. Next thing we'll look for would be chatter marks. And chatter marks are fairly common, some worse than others. In my opinion, when you can feel the chatter marks, and housing probably should not be used because as the apex seal goes across there, it's going to vibrate across all the tops of those surfaces and it's not going to seal very well. We also have overheating that we have to watch out for. Now, when you get the housing overheated, it may look perfectly good on the inside. The chrome may look just fine, but the heat causes the O-rings to fail. And once the O-ring fails, it allows the combustion gases to come across and slide in between the rotor housing and the side plate. And that acts as a blowtorch and will shrink this area if it doesn't cut through it. In this particular case, this one was horribly damaged. As you can see, it actually torched all the way through the chrome and all the way through the rotor housing, just about to the spark plug hole depth. This particular motor was a severe race car overheat. This is obviously a peripheral port housing. That is absolutely junk. Now, there have been some companies that have been working on trying to apply a new surface to the housings that have just been chrome flaked. This one seems to be fairly common for this one company. And as you can see, the surface hasn't ended up being as even as it could be. And so, personally, from our experience, we do not recommend using housings finished this way. At some point in the future, somebody may do a re housing that looks great and works great, but at the moment, this isn't it. Now, let's take a little better look at how to do some of these inspections a little more carefully. Let's take a look at some of the common damage from an overheat. I'm going to use this brand new housing because it's much easier to see. The first thing we're going to be looking for that would determine that the housing right away is not worth further inspection is damage to the water seal grooves. The hottest area of the motor and the most common area for failure will be this area here below 
the lead spark plug. This is the most common area, the hottest area of the motor. Occasionally, you'll actually see these edges peeled back. This housing here, and this applies to all of the factory housings except for the peripheral ports that were made by Mazda, it's a steel sleeve with an aluminum housing cast. If you can feel the sawtooth edge of the back of the steel housing, chances are you have a shrinkage problem. You're definitely going to want to take some very careful measurements. Usually if I can feel that, you're probably going to throw the housing. Now, the other things you're going to look for are some obvious other damage. Occasionally you'll also, especially in overheat motors, you'll see that this exhaust sleeve has come loose or is actually damaged. And so take a look at that and any of the other areas for major damage, especially if it's a used housing you're buying that was not in a motor that you tore down. They might have dropped it or had something fall on it and any damage across these o-ring surfaces could mean that the housing's no good. Now for a shrinkage we're going to be taking measurements of the width of the housing in usually four to six spots. The top here is your coldest area. So we're going to use that as our zero measurement and then we're going to be going ahead taking readings down from about an inch below the lead spark plug hole and about every three quarters of an inch down about to the base. You'll be able to tell when you've done taking readings because the reading will typically go from your zero measurement and will increasingly get worse and worse and then the shrinkage will get better. Now we're going to put the micrometer across the water seal groove on this housing. If this was a later housing without a seal groove then you'd go down just above the chrome and we're going to check our reading here. And in this case, we're getting a pretty standard reading. The housings will normally read 70 millimeters for the 12A or 80 millimeters for the 13B up here. Next, what we're looking for is to see if the housing has shrunk in this area. And in this case, being a new housing, although sometimes machining variances can occur, but so far we're looking very, very good. You want to see a reading of less than about two and a half thousandths of shrinkage. If this area in here shows any one spot that has more than about two and a half thousandths shrinkage, it's narrower, you want to throw the housing away because it will leak later on. Now, if the housing passes that test, then we'll want to check and make sure that the rest of the housing, we haven't missed anything. We're going to take another look at all of the surfaces. We're going to look in the water jackets for signs of deterioration. And if you do find noticeable amounts of the aluminum eaten away, then that usually indicates that the coolant hasn't been changed often enough and the housing would definitely require some serious consideration whether you want to use it. It is possible for the housing to be eaten bad enough that you'll have a coolant leak either into the exhaust port here or into a spark plug hole. And that should take care of most of the inspection for overheating. Let's take a look at some of the other inspections that we're going to want to do. Well, let's take a look at some other damage that's very common. This particular housing here is a 13B, and it's actually out of a third gen. And very common for the turbo cars will be cracks at the spark plug holes. The Mazda factory spec for those is 8 millimeters, which in my opinion is an awful long way. Usually if I see cracks any more than about half a millimeter or so, a millimeter long, I'm really concerned. Any cracks at all really should make you think twice about using the housing at all. Now something else we can see on this used housing very clearly is you can actually see the trace where the water seal was actually sealing 
on a housing that had leakage, you'd actually be able to see where that seal line got very, very vague off into the water jacket area, and you'd be able to see the leaks. Now, of course, before you take your any kind of micrometer readings, you'd want to fully clean the housing and the areas. We don't have to do the entire housing, but a straight blade razor blade, just scraping the areas flat, will get you a good reading. Let's take a look at some other common damage. This particular housing is another era. This is out of a normally aspirated second gen motor and the little airplane wings in there. The diffusers were installed to reduce the sound and they do a really good job. A little restrictive. Now this housing has several interesting features for damage. The damage we have on this outer edge here which you'll see is actually very common as these housings get older is from the end piece digging into the housing as the chrome wears out. And believe it or not, even with damage like this, these motors will still run, but definitely not a good candidate to reuse on a rebuild. This particular motor actually was old enough that it broke the apex seals because they rolled out of the groove, the upper piece of the three-piece apex seal, actually rolled out, and you can see all of the damage that it's done. And this instantly means that this is a throwaway candidate. This is another example of some damage. This is kind of a unique one. This particular rotor housing comes out of a 12A motor that was downshifted from fifth gear down into second. And because of the light rotors, it almost instantly spun up and buried the tack. It vaporized the apex seals in the motor. You'll see the crosshatch scratching from the apex seals. And this similar crosshatch pattern will also exist on a motor that's been run without an air cleaner. So light bit of scratch is okay, but any scratching you see in the surface means that you're getting a little bit of leakage, a little bit of inefficiency. Now let's take a look at another potential problem. We're seeing more and more peripheral ports being used. And you've got to remember that if they're not a factory housing that's completely cast, we are going to have some areas where we've had some machining done. And these areas, as they get older, will be prone to leakage. And so we're going to have to make sure that either the epoxy or the welding that they've done is still holding and everything's in good shape. Now that we've looked at basic inspection and some of the common damage that you're going to see, let's take a minute and think about what you're going to reuse on your next rebuild. And you've got a choice. You're either going to be building a motor that's going to last you 30, 40,000 miles, or you're planning on building a motor that's going to last you as long as the original factory motor did. So, if you're only expecting 30 or 40,000 miles, a used housing might be just fine. Considering the cost of a brand new third gen rotor housing, the retail price of well over $800, you're talking substantial cost savings. And if the cost is a concern and you don't expect the longevity, then a very carefully checked used rotor housing may be the thing for you. But let's step back and look at something. If that rotor housing has 50,000 miles on it and you're going to reuse it, you're getting the worst 50,000 miles out of that. So if you replace your apex seals, then you're putting a brand new apex seal on a used, worn out rotor housing. So, if you're going to build a first-class motor, think about this. That extra money you spend on that brand new rotor housing, that is money spent that goes directly to you. That means you get a much better product. If you want a motor that is going to last as good or better than an original factory motor, you're going to have to spend the money. But in the long run, it's a lot cheaper to build one good motor than to build two or three cheap motors. Think about all that time it takes to get an engine in and out of a car, all the expense, 
then all the time and expense of tearing it down and again building another lower quality motor. It's just not worth it. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can find this and many other videos at rotaryengineillustrated.com and you can find any of the parts or special tools that you've seen at pineappleracing.com.